Welcome to my favorite inverse operation, what we can do to solve an inequality. And I say that because here it gets a lot of confusion with students because we see a fraction. All of a sudden students see fractions, they're like, ooh, hold on, what am I going to do here? So what I'm gonna do is just do a little preliminary um, showcase here of some problems that we're familiar with. Let's say I have x plus one equals five. I have x minus one equals five. And then I have five x equals, I don't know, 10. All right. So if I was going to solve any one of these equations, we remember we use the inverse operation. So to solve for x here, I would subtract 1. Since my x is now being subtracted by 1, I would add 1. And here, since I'm multiplying by 5, I would divide by 5. Now these are very, very familiar inverse operations that a lot of us are used to. However, the one that a lot of us get stuck on is when I have x divided by 5 equal to 10. And we forget what inverse operations we're going to have to use. And remember, when solving for a variable, we want to isolate the variable. So we see that my variable is being divided by 5, so I'm going to have to multiply by 5 on both sides. So therefore, in this case, you can see, all right, well, I just need to multiply by 30 on both sides. Now, it's important to use inverse operations because what inverse operations do is they eliminate that term because this adds to 0, this adds to 0, that divides to 1, and that divides to 1, therefore leaving us with our variable isolated. So here, when I multiply my 30, that's going to now multiply to 1 or divide to 1. And a, 1 times a is just going to leave us with a. And that's going to be greater than 2,640. So now I need to represent this by using a line graph. So I'm going to make a nice little line graph. OK, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to have 2,640. And I'm going to start off with there. And we can represent any increments we want. I'm going to go by tens um, just because these are kind of larger numbers. And I just want to show where the numbers that are greater than is going to be going to the right. And numbers that are less than are going to be going to the left. Then what's really helpful is to say our solution again out loud. This says a is greater than 2,640. So I'm going to start greater than. So I'm going to make a nice circle at 2,640. However, I said greater than. I did not say greater than or equal to. So therefore, 2,640 is not a solution of this inequality. So since it's not a solution of this inequality, I'm not going to shade it in. Because on a line graph, we represent a point by shading it in. right? We represent a point by making a nice little dot. Like When we graph something, a line or a parabola or anything is a set of points that we put on there. Well, we're going to start at 2,640, but I'm not going to shade this in because it's not a part of the solution. However, all numbers that are greater than 2,640 are. So we look at, since our line graph, all these numbers are greater than. So rather than writing incremental, all these little mi infinite many dots, I'm just going to nice straight shade line. And I know that as long as I keep on going to the right, those numbers are going to be greater than 2,640. So that is going to be my solution to my inequality. Thanks.